Now I want to talk to you about the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule. We have a phenomenon in selling that's called the 80-20 rule. It doesn't matter whether we're selling vacuum cleaners, we're selling automobiles, we're selling exercise equipment, we're, it doesn't matter whatever we're selling. Motorhomes or service. Whenever we're trying to sell a product or service to someone, we know that for every five customers that we ask to buy from us today, Tony, for every five customers that we ask to buy from us today, 20% of them will say yes, very first response. 80% will say no. You with me? 20% of the customers will say yes to the very first closing question they're given. That's assuming, of course, Scott, we ask them a closing question, which means we're assuming the advisor is asking for the business. 20% of the people will say yes the first time you ask. 80% of the people will say no. Y'all with me? It's called the 80-20 rule. And interestingly <coughs> enough, we find that when we're measuring sales forces, usually about 20% of the salesmen are getting about 80% of the business. I mean, you got a, you got a dealership. I happen to know of a dealership where we got a salesman. Uh, it happens to be a Lincoln Mercury store of all things, and the, the guy's averaging 34 cars a month. Ex-police officer. Got tired of being shot at and went to work on Lincoln Mercury store. By the 571, not too far from here. A couple hours up the road towards Cleveland. Guy sells 34 cars a month. The entire dealership's only selling 85. So what does that mean about the other salesmen? Well, I got one selling 10, I got one selling 12, I got one selling 6, I got one selling 4, you know, and so forth. So m many sales departments have this phenomenon where we got one individual or two individuals, about 20% of your sales force is generating the majority of your business. 80% are generating about 20% of your business. It's a rule that came from an Italian economist by the name of Pareto, P-R-E-D-O, uh, but it's called the 80-20 rule. The problem in selling, particularly with advisors, is advisor says, well, you know, boss, I need to talk to you at that. I got a real problem with this Dieter Pro stuff. I mean, you know, I spent two weeks with these guys back there, and it don't work. <clears throat> don't work. This training's no good. You see, I've asked four, I asked four customers in a row this morning. I made four presentations in a row this morning, all four of them said no. So that word track that Don Reed gave me is useless. It does not work. But you see, what the service advisor doesn't understand is you got to make a minimum of five to get one. Am I right? 20% will say yes. So I've got to do five presentations in order to make my first sale. An advisor may say, you know, the last eight customers that I've talked to in a row told me no. They told me no, Sean. This training stuff is for the birds. You see, what they don't understand is number nine and number ten are going to say yes. I've got to ask ten times if I want to get two sales. It's called fear, and it turns into a cancer in your people that's called fear of rejection. I've heard no four times. I don't want to hear it anymore. And enable, for me to enable myself not to hear it anymore, Adam, I'm just not going to ask the question. That way I won't hear no. Fear, I'm afraid of no, so therefore I don't ask the question anymore. Do you all follow me on this? It is a cancer that exists in every sales force in America. I don't care what they're selling. Fear of rejection, we get tired of hearing no, so we stop selling, we stop asking for the sale, and we are now doomed to failure. Okay? So bear in mind, 20% will say yes right off the bat first time. They'll also say yes to the very first price you give them. The other 80% are going to require some work. We don't give up, do we, Ed? We have to now be an investigator and we have to ask questions. 